In today's video, we're going to be digging right into the new add-on pack for Slider Revolution 5.4, the distortion effect. I'm going to show you how you can use it, how to set it up, and this is a good example of the kind of thing you can do with it. So you can see we've got this sort of semi-underwater effect. As we mouse over, we increase that effect. If we jump over to another option and take a look at a different example, you can see we've got a more ripple kind of effect. And a third and final example is a sort of heat wave effect across the desert. Pretty cool. So let's take a look at how we can do that inside Slider Revolution 5.4. Now before we start this video, there's two things I want to make you aware of. First of all, it doesn't look like this effect is supported across all browsers. I've tested it in Microsoft Edge and I'm using it in Firefox at the moment and it seems to be working well. Second thing to make note of is that you have to have the full commercial version of Slider Revolution 5.4 to have access to this feature. If you don't, if it's shipped with a theme, you're going to have to purchase a license to get access to this add-on. If you don't already have a license, please consider using that affiliate link in the description below. It gives a small percentage back to the channel, costs you no more money, but it does help us create more great content for you. So let's just dig in and take a look at how we can start creating this distortion effect with Slider Revolution 5.4. So I'm gonna jump over into Slider Revolution and you can see I'm already in the interface. First thing I'm gonna do is click to create a new slider. Once we've done that, we're gonna call this distortion. We'll give it an alias of distortion. Once we've done that, we'll scroll down, make sure we've got standard slider and we'll go for full width. Now you'll notice once you've installed this new add-on pack, you're going to find on the right hand side we've now got a distortion effect. Now to access the add-on packs, all you need to do is go to add-ons on the left hand side under slider revolution. Scroll to the bottom and you'll see you've got the new distortion effect, providing you've got the updated version of slider revolution 5.4 installed. Once you do that, just install it and you'll get access to this. So once we've done that, let's go to the distortion effect and you can see we've got the option to say use distortion. So we click to switch that on and you can see we've got a range of different options in there. General, animation, slide, transition and interaction. Now I'm going to leave these as they are for now because we can adjust this on a slide by slide basis. So we'll leave those to the default settings, just enable it, hit save on there. That'll take us through then into start creating our slider. So the first thing we're going to do is create our first slide. So what we're going to do is come over to the main background image, click to activate that and say media library. Then I'm going to find the image that I want to work with, which is going to be this one. So we select that and click insert. That'll place the background image in place for us. And if we scroll down, you can see there's our background image. Now to access the settings for the distortion add-on, all we need to do is come up to this section where it says main background, general settings, and so on. You can see at the end, we've got add-ons. We click on there, any add-ons that you have installed as part of your Slider Revolution 5.4 will be listed. You can then simply click on the add-on that you want to enable and work with. So we're gonna click on distortion. You can see it gives the option to enable this. We we'll say yes, please. And you can see all those settings we had on the first screen are all now available to us in this part of the interface as well. So for now, let's just leave it with all the default settings. We're not going to load another template. We'll say the distortion map is ripple. And if we click to expand, you can see we've got a range of different options in there, including a custom option. Map size, we'll leave that set to large for now. And what we're going to do is we're just going to click on save slide. And then we're going to click on the preview option so we can take a look at what this looks like. So we open that up. You'll see that we now get this water sort of swirl effect going on like we saw with the shark image. And if we take our mouse over, you can see nothing actually happens. We just get this effect continually going on. And as it happens, it'll sort of transition to the next slide and give you that water effect. So let's close that down and take a look at some of those settings and what we can do. So when we've got the load settings template, you can see if we open that up, we've got a range of options in there, such as cloud, small, large, ripple, large, and so on. So let's just try something like the glitch small. Let's just say load the template. It's going to give us a quick warning to say, do you want to do this? It's going to override any settings you've applied. So we'll say, yes, we do. You can see that now updates the distortion map and the map size, and then gives us a little preview underneath. So again, let's just save this. And then let's just take a look at the preview option and we'll see we now get a glitch effect. So we mouse over, we start to get this weird glitching effect. So pretty cool. Close that down, come back in, let's just change that to the large map size, and again, we'll hit save, and then preview it. And we should see we now get a slightly different effect. So you can see now we get a much larger effect when we mouse over. So let's close that down, come back over and take a look at some of these things. 
put that back. Let's just say we get rid of glitch small and we'll put this to swirl large. And we'll say we want this to be set to small. We'll change the glitch to, let's just say spiral. Actually, let's just say ripple. Okay, so we can change those options. We don't have to use these template settings. We can do whatever we want with that. Hit save on there if we want to. But let's take a look. We've got animation. You can see we can auto animate. So this will continuously animate the slide's main background image. If we don't want that to happen, we only want to work when we actually take the mouse over. We can disable this and then we can control various different aspects. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail. I just want to give you a little overview of this particular effect in action and just show you some of the settings. It's going to be a good idea to get stuck in and test it and play about with yourself to see you can get the effect that you want. So on top of the animation options, we've also got the slide transition options. So if we click on there, you can see we can enable or disable the slide transition. If we enable it, you can see we now get a whole range of different options that allow us to control how the transition works, including enhanced distortion, so it apply extra power to the transition. So again, we can enable or disable that using that simple switch. So you can easily come in and fine tune this. You can adjust the easing if you want to, the transition, string transition, transition, slide transition the easing, the duration, the speed, and all those kinds of good things. We've also got the interaction option. So you can see we can enable or disable this, and what event do we want to use to actually trigger this particular interaction. So you can see we've got mouse move or mouse down. So mouse down is going to be if you click on it, whereas mouse move is if you just move your mouse over it. Again, you can see we've got the duration of the particular interaction, and we've also got the easing option on there, as well as the offsets for the X, Y, and the scale, and the rotation offset and disable on mobile, which, again, is one of those things that on a mobile you want it to be fast loading, so you can disable the effect on there if you want to. And that's really all there is to this distortion effect. I think it's pretty cool. It's limited at the moment to what you can do with it. It doesn't work across all browsers, but hopefully that'll be something that they can sort of rectify or at least come up with something that's going to be comparable on the browsers that don't necessarily support this particular effect. As always, if you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we add new content to the channel. As always, I'd love to hear what you think of this. If you think this is a good option, if you think it's something you could use, or you just think it's a little bit gimmicky, pop your feedback in the comments section below. Let's have a conversation on this. And if you enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more content, check out these other great videos on the channel. Take care.